Hey guys, welcome back to the Teenage Experience YouTube channel. I'm Mel and I'm going to be sharing my story today with you with my mental health journey, how I got where I am today, my story basically. <laughs> so my first mental health uh, experience happened in 2010 when I was getting bullied in school and I had a fight with one of these one of the another person and I, obviously I got caught got kicked out of school and ever since then I've been experiencing something with mental health so I was introduced to CAMS because I was experiencing depressive thoughts anxiety about going out and seeing people because I didn't go to school for a couple of months because I was scared to see all the other people that were involved in that fight when I was introduced to CAMS, first thought was, what am I doing here? Why am I here? I just want to be alone. And now looking back on that thought, I think I'm glad I was introduced to CAMS because that is not a thought to have whilst you're being, I think I was 11 years old. And you shouldn't be feeling like that in school. You should enjoy school. You should enjoy your time there. But I didn't halfway through. When I was introduced to CAMS, I was being put through family therapy for them to understand how I was feeling, but then for also me to understand how I was feeling because I had no clue what depression was. I had no clue what mental health was. I just thought it was just another thing in society. But now looking back, I'm glad because now I really love to support mental health i love to spread awareness about mental health because i know how important it is for other people to reach out and talk about it not like i did not like stay in the shadows and just speak up about it so it's very important for you to be heard really so after um i was introduced to cams and fam family therapy i had a therapist called lydia and heather and I didn't get along with them. And you either get along with a person or you don't. In this case, I didn't because I didn't like the things they were telling me. I didn't like the things they were doing. I didn't like what they were saying to my parents. In my mind, they were brainwashing my parents, but in reality, they wasn't. They were trying to help. And back then, yes, I disliked them, but now I understand why they did what they did. So. Thank you to Heather and Lydia for that. But um, when I was going through CAMS, it was an on and off experience. Didn't like it, liked it, getting there. You're going through high school, you're a teenager, going into puberty. You know, it's not a very nice thing to think about when you're going through high school. You want to get good grades, you want to focus on your friends, you want to focus on yourself, but I just had mental health in the back of my mind saying, yo, you're not alone. <laughs> so uh, going through high school, obviously I uh, finished the other one and then I transferred to a new one, which was the best decision of my life. And ever since then, I've never looked back. So when I moved to the new high school, I was still seeing cams after school, in the middle of school, whenever. I was developing an eating disorder because that came from when I had that fight, someone called me fat and other names that just stuck in my head till this day. And when you're looking back on that, you think you shouldn't have listened to them. But back then, you I don't know, it was just a hard thing to get out of your head. It was like it's stuck in your it's in your brain. It's like a different voice in your brain saying, that person's right you need to stick to that you need to lose weight you need to do this you need to do that when in reality you don't do don't need to do anything so when i explained this to cams i was like hmm, this is what happened this is a timeline of what i remember and they sat down with me and done a timeline so all these post-it notes are different events in my life that i remember because right now I don't have a good memory. <laughs> so looking back on this now, it's like I can re, I can be in that moment again and think, what should I have done? You know, but obviously you can't change the past. You can't change the future. You can't 
do this, you can't do that. You can do what's here and now. So when I was in CAMS, they told me that I was going to be diagnosed with anorexia nervosa because back in 2011, that's when I was diagnosed with anorexia nervosa and I was about six stone something, something like that along them lines. And to me, that wasn't a problem. That was my life. I revolved my life around food. I revolved around like losing weight. I cared about what other people thought, not what was going on inside my brain, not what was damaging my body. I didn't realize how damaging it would be to my body. And then after I was diagnosed with anorexia nervosa, I was diagnosed with depression and anxiety. So to me, that was a lot to take on as an 11 year old. I was like, whoa, what is going on in my life? I I'm just want to be a normal kid. I just want to enjoy my life like I used to. Because before high school, I used to love, love my life. I used to go out, play football. I used to go out and enjoy being with my friends. But ever since high school came in, I was just like, wow, I do not like this life. Get me out. <laughs> the best decision was make, uh, move in high school Be definitely the best decision i made after being diagnosed with them through mental health mental illnesses even uh i just carried on in high school was i was seeing therapists i was seeing different types of therapists and they were doing like cbt cycles with me they were doing different activities with me which i've got right in front of me but that's going to be another video for another day and after during high school, around the last two years of my life, going through the GCSEs, going through exams, I developed another uh, eating disorder called bulimia nervosa. Now this is where things got heavy for me because it's not what I thought it'd be. It's, and it's still stuck with me to this day. So what, nearly six years on and I'm still dealing with bulimia nervosa depression and anxiety so in the last year of high school that's when it got really bad uh, I was moving house as well because in the area I was living that's where the school my old school was and that's where all the bad memories were so I wanted to get away from that and start a new life really so when we moved house I had other family problems as well um, which uh, it was just a lot to take on going through high school, doing your GCSEs, dealing with your family problems, moving house, and just hoping to get good grades. And then on top of that was mental health. So I was just like, gosh, what is going on inside my brain? What am I dealing with? Why is it me? So after I finished high school, uh, I was moved up to adult mental health in where I live now. And I've been seeing them on and off for the past six years. And they have been a help, don't get me wrong, but there have been times where I think, what is the point? Like, it's just, I just feel like I'm getting nowhere. And with this mental health, with dealing with bulimia, it's become a part of me. And I see it more of a, as an addiction than a mental health, because whenever I feel down, whenever I feel like I need a coping mechanism, bulimia is my coping mechanism. There are so many different types of coping mechanisms that I can choose from, but bulimia is what stuck with me because I just see it as more of an addiction. And every night, that is when it starts up. I have a cycle, what I go through, my parents go to bed, and that's my time, my alone time, when I can go downstairs, make tons of food, and come back upstairs, binge, and then feel guilty about myself and then go downstairs and be sick and that's nearly every night possibly yeah nearly every night now and that is just something that stuck with me for six years maybe even more than that and with these seizures they can happen at any time anywhere but um now i know what triggers me what alerts me if i get too hot if i get too excited like say in a concert uh i need to drink plenty of water plenty of fluids and not get too hyper and 
so the heat excitement obviously not eating if you're not getting that fluid in you as well but with bulim the bulimia side of it when i'm pur purging that is making the acid come back up acid reflex and it's damaging your uh, glands by here so every time i'm like purging all by here is like swollen and then i get bloodshot eyes and when i look at myself in the mirror i'm like why are you doing this to yourself but it's hard to come out of it and that's when i say it's like an addiction because it's just it's hard to stop and well to me it's impossible to stop but i've seen so many people who have recovered from bulimia because i just want to be where they are and that would be amazing just to say, look, I've recovered from bulimia. I've recovered from mental health. I have done it. I am there. But I'm not there yet. I'm nowhere near it. But I'm on my way. And I know by sharing this story, by sharing my story, I know it's going to help other people come out and talk about it and reach out. And that's what we're all about at TWE. We want to help people just feel heard. We want to help people and i just couldn't thank them enough for letting me become part of the team and sharing my story so i hope this video was like a insight of my life i'm gonna go into more details about what activities i was doing with the therapist what helped me what didn't help me etc in other stories in this series so I hope you guys like this video, make sure to check out all the other videos that we are doing and make sure to like, subscribe and share and I'll see you next time. Ciao!